Ladies and gentlemen, all eyes are set at the Supreme Court of Kenya. And one week later, after the hearing, we expect the Supreme Court of Kenya to announce or to declare the final verdict. Raila Molo Dinga has made it very clear that his final fight is at the Supreme Court of Kenya. And he believes that, or he, he is very much determined that the Supreme Court of Kenya will rule in favor of the Azimio Lomoja. But he made it very clear that he will accept what the Supreme Court of Kenya will say before he makes another political move because we know that Raila Molo Odinga is a politician. Dr. William Samoe Ruto, the president-elect of the Republic of Kenya, made it very clear and is very much determined that the IEBC conducted free and fair election and he won fair and square. Now, in this video today, I just want to assure you guys that we expect the Supreme Court of Kenya to make a ruling by next week. And I want to assure you that the Supreme Court of Kenya is once again set to humiliate Raila Amolo Odinga once more. Raila Amolo Odinga believes that he won the elections <laughs> by 50 plus 1 percent. And that the IEBC chairperson Wafula Chebugati rigged him out in favor of Dr. William Samuel Ruto. So, according to the Supreme Court of Kenya today, I followed that petition up to where it is. And I just want to give you a brief positive result of those who are expecting Dr. William Samuel Ruto to continue as the president-elect of the Republic of Kenya. But before that, if you're watching this video for the first time, please support me by subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please give this video a thumbs up so that YouTube can recommend my channel to reach out to other people and to my subscribers, to my loyal viewers and to my supporters. Just want to take this opportunity also to thank you guys for your support. Actually, I'm not taking your support for granted. Let us go deeply into this uh, Supreme Court petition. According to Martha Kaome, I've heard him very clearly. He is the CJ. He is the one controlling everything at the Supreme Court of Kenya. And he has said that the consolidations of the matter, of the, of the petition matters, of determination, according to the previous filed and submission, will be updated in nine main uh, issues. Let me read out for you the issues that will determine the ruling of this petition. Martha Kome has made it very clearly that it will be determined by, determined by whether the technology deployed by IEBC met the standards of integrity. Was there security? Was there transparency in conducting the presidential election? For me, if you ask me that question, I will tell you Brief, I will just tell you that there was transparency at the IEBC. Because right now, if you go to the IEBC portal, you will find the results at the portal from 34A, 34B, and 34C. Unlike the previous elections, whereby even in 2017 general election, we have not seen the servers up to date. But the servers this time round were very much public. What you needed to do, I personally tallied the, the, the total votes. What you needed to do is just to go to the IEBC portal, download Form 34A, 34B, and 34C, and calculate the results with a calculator. Only plus and minus, nothing else. So if you ask me that question, I will definitely tell you that there was actually transparency. In the submission of the results. Point number two, which Dr. Uh, Martha Corm is talking about, is that whether there was interference 
with uploading and transmission of Form 34S from polling stations to the IEBC portal. According to Raila Amolo Odinga's petition, he made it very clear that there were interference, whereby before the results are transmitted to the IEBC national or to the IEBC portal, Itumbi and uh, other IT, uh, okay, actually it was ACT. So before the IBC, the, the results are transmitted to the IEBC portal, the transmission of the results went through IBC's, uh, Itumbi's portal, whereby he cooked or he hacked the account of the IEBC. So before the results are transmitted to the IEBC portal, Itumbi as it as the, the 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 results first but if you ask me that question i will definitely tell you if there was that case then they will have to prove that because i don't believe that way because that screenshot by the um presiding officer at every polling station was the one submitted to the iebc portal if you ask me that and the that point is that was there differences between Form 34As uploaded to IEBC public portal and Form 34As received at the national tally and different Form 34As issued to the agents? If you ask me that question, I will definitely tell you that that is very wrong. The Form 34As is one. That one Form 34A which was issued to the agent at every polling station was the same form 34A which was transmitted to the national tally or to the IEBC portal. It is not different. It is not different. That form 34A which the presiding officer tallied the total votes of each and every polling station and screenshotted before transmitting the result to the returning officer at the county level, I personally believe that it is the same same form which was transmitted to the IEBC national tally. And Martha Kome is saying that postponement of election in Mombasa and Kakamega. We know that there was postponement of gubernatorial and some MP uh, uh, polling station. Like in Mombasa, the gu gubernatorial seat was contested and people uh, voted yesterday. So the Martha Kome is, as is asking, the postponement of elections in Mombasa and Kakamega resulted in voter suppression. If you ask me that question, that postponement did not affect the voters. Simply because majority of voters who went to vote, they voted overwhelmingly for two candidates, Raila Amolo Odinga and Dr. William Samuel Ruto. The people who went to vote, they wanted to vote for their president only majority of them others other candidates like the, the 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 mps the mcas they were not strongly determined by the voters but voters wanted to vote for the president so much so according to me my personal view i don't believe it if the postponement suppressed the voter turnout and point number five was there an explained discrepancies between votes cast between presidential candidates and the elective position. If there were discrepancies, if you ask me that question, the IEBC made it very clear, announced it to the public. For example, you had cases whereby the electronic failed to work and IEBC had to use the manual register and it made it publicly. That an example is Kakamega County, where some voters were complaining that the, the 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 electronic register is not functioning, and the IEBC made it very public that this area we had this challenge of uh, electronic register, therefore we had to use the manual register, which was actually allowed by the High Court, that use the electronic register if it fails, use the manual register, and the sixth point. IBC carried, carried, did the IEBC carry out 
verification, tallying and declaration of results with according to the constitution. Yes, all the IBC officials, including the commissioners, the four commissioners led by the vice chairperson of the IEBC, Juliana Cherera, they were included in telling the results, verification, and announcement. They only disowned the final um, results. They only disowned the final results. But they engaged, they were engaged in all the IEBC process, the election process. And the seventh point, Martha Kome is asking whether the president-elect attained 50 plus 1. Of course, yes. The IEBC chairperson of Ula Chebugati would not have announced the winner as president-elect Dr. William Samuel Ruto. William Samuel Ruto was able to attain 7.1 million, which resulted to 50 plus 1. 50 plus 4 something percent. According to those who are complaining, they wanted to cook figures for a rerun, led by Juliana Cherera and other IBC commissioners. They wanted to cook the figures in favor of Raila Molodinka or in favor of a rerun. And that did not, uh, they did not achieve that one. And the eighth point. Martha Kome has asked if there were irregularities, illegalities to affect the final results. I don't think if there were irregularities, or if there were irregularities, they were minimal, very minimal irregularities, but they did not affect or affect largely the final result. And what orders, the ninth point is that Martha Kome is asking what orders can the Supreme Court grant? We expect three things. We expect Martha Koome to nullify the whole election process and declare all voters to go back to the general election, like what happened in 2017. The second point, we expect Martha Koome, and if we go back to the general election, I want to assure you that William Ruto will also beat Raila Molodinga fair and square. Right now, as we speak, Raila Molodinga are very much focused with the Supreme Court of Kenya. But we have seen Dr. William Samuel Ruto going to places, calling other people to defect uh, uh, from Azimio Lomoja, members of parliament. So if we go back to the general election, William Samuel Ruto will also win. The second point, the, I, the Supreme Court of Kenya will can also decide for a recount. They count back the total votes, the IEBC to go back and count the total votes to determine the winner. That was it for today. Let me your thoughts on the, case, second, on the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching my videos. I'm not taking your support for granted. Thank you so much. See you in the next video.